On the edge of the world, where waves collide with rocky shores, there stands a lighthouse, a lone, defiant beacon against the darkness. Tonight, on Tales of the Beard, we dive into the story of the last lightkeeper, a man who became the lighthouse's final guardian. Rumor has it, he vanished without a trace, leaving only a single flickering light in his wake. Was it madness, isolation, or something far more sinister that led to his disappearance? Turn up the volume, because tonight, the sea isn't the only thing calling. I'm Matt. This is Tales of the Beard. Let's get into The Last Light Keeper. of old and stories bold secrets waiting to be heard adventures start with every turn welcome to tales of the beard tales of old and stories bold secrets waiting to be heard adventures start with every turn welcome to tales of the beard In a world where technology had long since failed, the remnants of a once advanced civilization lay scattered, buried under layers of time and neglect. Electricity was a distant memory, and machines had fallen silent. Amid this technology dark age, the last functioning lighthouse stood tall and solitary on the rocky coast of Greystone Bay. It was a beacon of hope, a relic of an age when the world has once thrived on innovation and progress. Now, it was the only guide for those lost at sea on the last bastion of human resilience. The lighthouse keeper, Eli Grant, had lived in solitude for many years. His only companions were the sea and the storm. The lantern room at the top of the lighthouse was in his sanctuary, a place where he maintained the ancient mechanism that kept the light burning through the dark nights. Eli took pride in his work, finding solace in the rhythmic, comforting duty of winding the clockwork that powered the beacon. The night of the storm was unlike any Eli had seen before. Dark clouds rolled overhead, and the wind howled through the cliffs with a ferocity that shook the old lighthouse to its core. Waves crashed violently against the rocks, sending spray high into the air. Lightning illuminated the tumultuous sea in flashes casting eerie shadows that danced across the walls of the lighthouse. Eli had prepared for the storm, securing the windows and ensuring the light was fully operational. He moved with practiced efficiency, checking the oil levels and the me mechanisms winding. As the storm raged on, he retreated to the lantern room, the most secure part of the lighthouse, where he could monitor the beacon and keep the light steady. The storm had reached its peak when Eli noticed something strange. Through the torrential rain and howling wind, he saw a peculiar shimmer in the waves. The lighthouse's beam had revealed something in the water, a pattern of glimmers that seemed too precise to be a mere trick of the light. Intrigued, Eli adjusted the lens and focused on the area. As the lighthouse beam swept across the sea, the glimmering pattern emerged more clearly. It was as if the waves themselves were writing a message in the darkness, forming shapes and symbols that were unmistakably deliberate. Eli squinted, his heart racing with a mix of excitement and apprehension. The message seemed to spell out directions, guiding the beam toward a specific point in the water. The storm made it difficult to discern details, but Eli was certain that something significant lay beneath the surface. He grabbed his old oil lamp and descended the spiral staircase, determined to uncover the mystery. Outside, the storm was relentless. Eli battled against the wind and the rain as he made his way to the small boat moored at the dock. It was a weathered vessel, one he rarely used, but he had kept in working order. He knew that venturing out in such conditions was dangerous, but the allure of the hidden message was too strong to resist. With the boat 
Navigating the tumultuous waves, Eli followed the directions revealed by the lighthouse. The sea seemed to conspire against him, tossing the small craft violently. Eli's hands were steady on the rudder, his eyes locked on the beacon's light, which cut through the storm like a beacon of hope. As he approached the designated area, the boat lurched over a particularly high wave, and Eli saw something beneath the water. It was a dark shape, partially obscured by the swirling waves, heart pounding. He maneuvered the boat closer, using the lantern's light to pierce the darkness. With great effort, Eli anchored the boat and lowered himself into the cold, churning water. The storm's fury intensified, but he pressed on, swimming toward the submerged shape. His hands found the edge of an old wooden chest, encrusted with barnacles and seaweed. The chest was heavy, but Eli managed to haul it to the surface and aboard the boat. As he struggled to open the chest, a sudden gust of wind nearly capsizes the boat. Eli fought to keep the vessel steady, his hands trembling with cold and excitement. Finally, he pried open the chest's rusted locks. What did he find inside? A collection of ancient scrolls meticulously rolled and tied with faded ribbons. The scrolls were covered in delicate faded writing and intricate drawings. Eli spread them out on the boat's deck, his lantern casting a warm glow on the fragile parchment. The writing was in an old script that Eli struggled to decipher, but he recognized symbols and patterns from the messages he had seen in the waves. The scrolls contained detailed maps and diagrams of a hidden underground facility built long before the technological collapse. The diagram showed advanced machinery and intricate mechanisms designed to harness energy from the earth itself. The facility buried beneath the rocks and hidden from view was a testament to an ancient civilization's ambition and ingenuity. The storm finally began to dissipate as Eli studied the maps. The directions led to a specific location on the coast marked by an old lighthouse symbol. Eli realized the facility was likely located beneath the very cliffs upon which his lighthouse stood. With renewed determination, Eli navigated the boat back to the dock and rushed to the lighthouse. He quickly gathered tools and provisions, preparing for an expedition to uncover the hidden facility. The storm had left the coastline battered and treacherous, but Eli was undeterred. The next morning, as the storm clouds dispersed and the first light of dawn broke through the remnants of the tempest, Eli began his search. Guided by the maps, he explored the cliffs, using his knowledge of the lighthouse's foundation to locate a concealed entrance. His efforts led him to a hidden cave, partially obscured by debris and seaweed. Inside the cave, Eli found a rusty iron door, partially buried in the sand. With considerable effort, he pried it open and descended into the darkness. The passage led to a series of interconnected chambers filled with relics and remnants of a bygone era. The machinery was old, but still functional, a testament to the durability of its design. Eli spent hours exploring the facility, piecing together the workings of the ancient machines. The facility contained a vast network of gears, pulleys, and conduits, all connected to a central power source. Eli realized that the facility had been designed to harness geothermal energy, a resource that could have sustained the world long after technological advancements had failed. As he continued to investigate, Eli discovered a control room with a central console. The console was covered in dust and cobwebs, but appeared to be operational. With great care, he activated the controls, and the facility sprang to life. The machinery hummed and whirred, gradually coming to life after so many years of inactivity. The facility system began to generate power, and the lights flickered to life, casting a soft glow over the chambers. Eli was amazed to see that the facility's energy was harnessed from the earth itself, providing a sustainable and renewable source of power. It was a dis rediscovery of lost technology, a beacon of hope for a world in need of new solutions. Eli returned to the lighthouse, determined to share his discovery with the world. He knew that the facility's power could be a catalyst for a new era of progress, helping to restore some of the lost advancements of the past. The lighthouse, once a solitary sentinel, in a world of darkness, had become a symbol of renewal and hope. As the days passed, Eli worked tirelessly to restore the facility to full functionality. He reached out to the remaining pockets of civilization, sharing his findings, inspiring others to join him in rebuilding the world. The rediscovered technology provided a new foundation for a future that combed, combined the wisdom of the past with the possibilities of the present. 
the enchanted lighthouse stood as a testament to human ingenuity and resilience. It was a reminder that even in the darkest times, there was always a glimmer of light, a beacon of hope that could guide humanity toward a brighter future. And so, the legacy of Eli Grant and the last lightkeeper lived on, illuminating the path for generations to come. There we go. That was the last lightkeeper. Sorry that uh, some words apparently tripped me up. We'll get through it next time. Hopefully you enjoyed The Last Lightkeeper. We'll be back next week for another episode. If you have an idea, if there a topic, or you know somebody that maybe wants to write some stories for us to tell here, well, us, me to tell here on this, please shoot them over to Matt at BeardLaws.com or connect on the Beard Laws Instagram. Can't thank you enough for taking some time out of your busy day to listen to Tales of the Beard. We'll be back next week. Take care, everybody.